Hello and welcome to another episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. Hey, today is a big story and it follows on from two previous conversations I had with Joe. So if you haven't listened to episode three and episode 31, I'd recommend you go back and take a listen. Because episode three, titled Faith and Loss, Joe shares about her stillbirth experience. Then again, in episode 31, Joe talks about the days following and how she chose to celebrate when her other friends were giving birth to their babies. And today's episode is the third installment when Joe found out that she was pregnant again following the stillbirth. So again, if you want to get the most out of today's episode, go back, listen to episode three, listen to episode 31 to get the most out of today. Right now, though, let's get into today's Bible verse. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank Him for His answers. If you do this, you'll experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. That's found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7 in the Living Bible. Wrapping up this week's conversations, I have got Jo Chapman once again here in studio. It's a pleasure, Joy. I do believe I get a lot more out of it than I'm probably giving. I get a lot out of doing this podcast (laughs) as well. It's sort of forcing me to look at things a different way. Like I'm learning and growing so much. Mm. And if you're listening right now and you've found yourself learning and growing as well, well, welcome to the family. Yes, it's so exciting to connect together over such a great thing. Yeah. And today's verse, one of my favorites. Mm. Um, and it, for me, my first impression is that it means so much more when I am in a state of worry. I'm very good at worrying. <laughs> I'm a pro. <laughs> and this verse, I think, reminds me, um, hey, just as much as you're worrying, are you praying about this? Like, what's the ratio here? Mm. And can we tip the balance a little bit? You're praying more than you're worrying about this. Those are my first impressions. What would you say, Joe? Um, this verse... What are your first impressions, Joe, of this verse? And what does it tell you about what matters to God? I think straight away of that song, don't worry, be happy. And I think about what a cliche it is and how if you're in the midst of worrying, that would just really probably annoy you. And I and I get that too. But I think God gives us some answers in this um, and he loves us so much. He's saying, don't worry, pray about everything and um, tell God you need. So there's very, when you're worried, you don't know what to do. Yeah. This is an action. This is an action scripture. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray. Then it says, tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him. And if you do this, you will get peace and far more than your human understanding could take. So sometimes you get paralyzed and don't know what to do Mm. when you're worried. This is a to-do list. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. And God is very yeah. practical. He's really practical in the way he He um, gives you that answer. Easier said than done. But one thing I will say, I used to be a big warrior, Joy. Life and experience and adventures with God have taught me to jump very quickly from the worry to prayer and, and thanks. Mm. And I think when you experience God in the moments that you worried, you kind of get to know him and how to do this better. Yeah. I love how you said it's a to-do list. I love to-do lists. (laughs) Well, it is, isn't it? It's full of actions. (laughs) So good. Yes, please. Um, One of the things about this verse that it covers is, of course, this idea of worry. Mm. And a lot of things can worry us. New situations, new uh, relationships, new opportunities, the uncertainty of the unknown. But worry can also come from something that's happened in the past and it's presented itself again. Mm. And I know you've got a story about how this verse has come alive in that aspect for you. Often when you go through trauma, um, it leaves a very big fear, a, a scar, so to speak, um, because once bitten, twice shy, mm. an experience um, has, you know, and feeling the trauma and having that trauma is, is you've got to fully feel it. You know, there's no... There's nothing but validation that if you've gone through abuse, if you've gone through divorce, if you've gone through sickness, that's a very real thing that you've been through. I I don't appreciate when people say you can't feel it or talk about it because that's denial Mm. and that is, you know, 
some hyper faith mentality that you can't acknowledge reality. No, acknowledge reality, but don't stay there. Yeah. That's the difference. Mm. Um, now, I went through a lot of trauma giving birth to a stillborn son at 36 weeks. So the classified full term, he was, you know, five, five and a half um, pound. He was able to be born. Mm. And so, um, and that is a big story, which I don't have time to unpack right now, but I believe you can um, find that in some other episodes. Absolutely. Go back and listen to episode three and episode 31. Um, but yes, I'll continue, Joe. Yeah. So if you've heard that story, I went through a quite a traumatic time and I really felt that trauma. And about ooh, nine months after I gave birth to Michael, who was stillborn and um, for no reason at all, uh, the doctors could not find any reason at all that he should have passed away. They called it what they would say is like um, sudden infant death, but in the womb. Mm. So... Um, yeah. So nine months later, after I'd had Michael, I was pregnant again. Very wow. excited, yeah. you know, super excited. I can't tell you the trauma of a stillbirth. And I didn't want to end on that note, so to speak. Um, and a few things. I asked God, I said, God, I really like to not have a little boy with brown hair, which is what Michael was. I'd really like the opposite, a girl with really blonde hair. And I did end up having a, a little girl with really very oh. blonde hair. And just because I didn't want to think of the child I'd lost with the child that was coming. Yeah. Mm. But this is, the, this is the factor of how I had to not worry and instead pray and tell God my needs and thank him. Mm. So when I was pregnant, with, which is now Grace, my 15-year-old, um, I had to go through all of those thoughts. What if this happens again? What if somewhere in the pregnancy she dies? Uh, we don't know why Michael died. How do I know what's going to happen with this fifth child? And I immediately thought to myself, I can't do this. I can't go through nine months. What is that going to do to the baby? What's it going to do to me? Um, I need to deal with this fear. Is it fear or faith that I'm going to go into? Is fear going to lock me in the prison from my last experience to my new experience? Or am I going to step out of fear? And go into faith for this experience. Because another word to live by, another scripture, is God makes all things new. Yeah. Mm. So don't take the old into your new situation. So I had to come to a point of acting in faith. And so I said, okay, God, you said don't worry, but pray. And that's what I'm doing. And then you said tell and make your request known to God. So I said, God, I love you. You are right near me all the time. You pick up those pieces. You speak to my heart. You help me make decisions. I don't want to go full term to, with this baby 40 weeks. The doctor had said to me, would you like to have a cesarean? And um, we will, you know, uh, when the baby's 35 weeks or something like that, because it's your fifth child, it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And you can have a cesarean whenever you want when you can't do it anymore. When you can't wait anymore, we will do a cesarean. And I said, no, I will not take fear into my new situation from my past. So I prayed, God, cut off the fear. Mm. Make me learn from it, but let me have a renewed spirit. And I ask you, God, that I go into natural labor two weeks before this baby is due. Could I have this baby two weeks early, please, naturally? Just that's what I pray. And I ask you and I thank you, again applying the, la the next principle, I thank you that you're with me. I thank you, hear my prayer. And so I had a completely natural birth. So I was pregnant and I sang and I celebrated and I applied the things that I'd learned in previous pregnancies. And, and you can also go back and hear that in those episodes. Mm. I celebrated, even though I'd gone through pain. And then Grace was due on the 11th of December and she was born on the 30th of November. Wow. She was born 12 days early. Wow. And by natural, she was born in one and a half hours and she was a little girl with blonde hair. Mm. Now, you don't always get exactly, but you know what? There is power in believing. There is power in breaking the chains of the past and stepping into what has God got new for me. Mm. There is action in this thing. Don't worry. Pray instead. And I didn't pray every day because God's not deaf. 
when I started to worry, I prayed. Yeah. I didn't have to pray every day, but I substituted worry for prayer. So when I felt worried, I prayed. Mm -hmm. And then I told God what my need was two weeks before God, I would like to have this baby and I, I trust you. And then I thanked him before it happened and I just waited. I just waited. It didn't mean that worry didn't come up. But you stamp on that worry with your fearless prayers. You stamp on that fear and say, not today. And you just say, God, hold me tight. Keep me close. Help me to make those life decisions. Bring me to a new place. And my little girl, who's 15, and she'd laugh if I called her little, I called her Grace. And now if you've ever wondered why I called her Grace, you know. She is the grace that came after trauma. Mm. Joe, I know that there'd be a lot of people listening right now who can resonate in so many ways with your story Mm. because they've experienced trauma of some kind and now something is happening again in their lives. Mm. Maybe it's a new relationship following a relationship breakdown. Mm. Maybe after some severe health struggles, you finally are feeling well and healthy again and you're just waiting for that other shoe to drop in Mm. some ways. But there's something good developing in your life, but you can't let go of the past pain. Yeah. And if that's you listening right now, we would love to pray for you in this moment. Yeah. And so, Joe, could I ask you to pray for anyone right now who is struggling with that worry yeah. because of something that's happened in their past? Absolutely. It's such a privilege and I don't take it lightly. And I thank you for allowing me to pray. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you that you are the God of healing, of hope, of restoration. You speak life into us and you see us. You pick up every piece and you carry us. Lord, right now for anybody who who is listening, who has trauma, who has pain from the past and is now in a situation where they have that pain speaking loudly into their spirit and into their heart. They may have fear. Lord, I pray that you would substitute worry for prayer. Lord, I pray that you would help them rise up and say, Lord, take away my trauma. Put that in a place of history and bring to me a renewed spirit. Bring to me renewed hope. Rise up in me with a new faith because God is able to make all things new. You don't take your pain into your present, but open up your hands. Sometimes we're holding that pain, Lord, and we have no hands to hold anything new. Help us to let go, to entrust our pain into your presence, to let go and with open hands find new beginning, new faith, new hope, new joy. So I just pray for you listening right now who doesn't know how to let go of worry, Open up your hands, pray to God, thank Him, and just allow His presence to envelop you and make you new. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs, and don't forget to thank Him for His answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. I'm not sure what beautiful new thing is blooming in your life, and I'm not sure what past trauma and experiences and the impact they have on your current situation. I don't know the details, but God does. I hope that today's conversation can free you and can remind you to focus on God and not the worry. Well, that wraps up today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. If this episode impacted you in any way, would you consider leaving a five-star written review? It really does help get this message out to all the people who really need to hear it. You can also like, follow, subscribe and share this podcast with friends and family. Sometimes it's easier to give them a podcast to listen to when you struggle to share these thoughts with them yourself. I'm looking forward to catching up for the next episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I will say we're doing something a little different next week and I think you're going to love it. Cannot wait.